Welcome to United We Spay, the show dedicated to promoting affordable spay neuter services nationwide. Each episode delves into the heart of the movement, sharing inspiring stories and driving positive change. Our goal is to raise awareness, educate and empower, addressing overpopulation's root causes to ensure every animal has a chance for a better life. Hosted by Stacey LeBaron and the United Spay Alliance team, we're on a mission to change lives. Fed up with the fixation on symptoms in the animal welfare conversation, it's time to change the narrative. Join us on United We Spay, where we make a difference by spreading knowledge and building a compassionate world for animals. Let's put prevention first and spotlight spay neuter in the animal welfare space. You are listening to United We Spay, a podcast from United Spay Alliance. United Spay Alliance works to promote accessible, affordable, and timely spay neuter services because an ounce of prevention today can prevent untold suffering tomorrow. Spay neuter, it's public health for pets. I am Stacey LeBaron, United Spay Alliance board member and host of this show. And today on United We Spay, I am thrilled to have two guests with us today. We have Esther Meckler and we have Dr. Phil Bushby. Esther graduated from Bates College in 1964 with a major in psychology. After careers in social work, guidance counseling, and as director of admissions at UB School of Law, Esther began a new life in animal advocacy. And she started Spay USA in 1990 and 25 years later launched the United Spay Alliance, passionate about preventing suffering wherever possible. The idea of preventing unwanted litter seemed the best way to reduce shelter intakes, the numbers of homeless animals and cruelty and neglect. The fix by five months concept came as an aha moment, which he realized that if shelters and vets promoted this and if the public accepted and followed up, we'd see a day when there are no more overwhelming kitten seasons. She had no concern that there would be not enough kittens to go around. That is very unlikely ever to happen. Today, feline fixed by five is gaining ground, but slowly. Many people still think six months when asked when to spay neuter. This simple shift from six to five, though, would make a huge difference reducing shelter intake to a level that is in line with adoptions to good homes. And then we have Dr. Phil Bushby, who graduated with a DVM degree from the University of Illinois CVM in 1972. He completed an internship and surgical residency at the Henry Berg Memorial Hospital of the ASPCA in New York City and a second surgical residency and master's degree at Auburn University CVM. He left private practice to come to Mississippi State in early 1978, a board certified surgeon. Dr. Bushby has served in the Mississippi State University faculty for over 45 years, and he established the MSU-CVM shelter program and is a frequent speaker on efficient spay neuter. He was a member of the organizing committee for the Shelter Medicine Specialty Board, receiving the ASPCA's Henry Berg Award in 2008 and the AVMA's Animal Welfare Award in 2012, and the Association of Shelter Veterinarians Meritorious Service Award in 2015. He holds the Marsha Lane Endowed Chair of Humane Ethics and Animal Welfare at Mississippi State University. So Esther, I would like to welcome you to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Esther, how did you become so passionate about spay neuter? Well, I think it was the idea that there is tremendous suffering, the shelters were overflowing, and I thought the only answer, the real answer, is to prevent them from being born in the first place. It's just that simple. There's a whole other process with fixed by five, when we, we realized, again, what a difference it could make if we, if we just fixed before the first heat. That was another aha moment. So those were my two big aha moments with spay neuter, I would say. Excellent. And Dr. Bushby, can you share a bit about why you are so passionate about spay neuter? Well, the, uh, you mentioned I did an internship and a surgical residency at Henry Berg in New York City back in the early 70s. And in the early 70s, the uh, ASPCA was, among other things, animal control for all five boroughs of New York City. And in the year of my internship in that one facility, they euthanized over 130,000 stray dogs and cats. And if you do the math, and I, don't, I honestly don't remember if they euthanized on the weekends, but if they didn't, that equates to slightly more than 500 animals 
a day, every day, every week, every month, they were euthanizing that that number of animals. And like Esther said, the only way to reduce that is to reduce the numbers of animals that are being born. Uh, and spay neuter is the only technique we have to do that. It's very interesting. I was had an interview earlier today, and it it is. They keep saying it's so simple. This is just <laughs> so simple, and keep it simple. So you're talking about Bushby. You're talking about your experience in New York, and you were talking about all the euthanasia happening. Is it more complicated to spay or neuter a cat than it is to euthanize it? Oh, is it more complicated? Well, yeah, it's it's it takes a little bit more time and a little bit more effort to perform a ovarian hysterectomies than, than it does to uh, give a single injection and kill the cat. But from the standpoint of, of, of just any sense of humane ethics or uh, morality, why would you choose? oh, let's just have all these extra kittens born every year and let's just you, let's just kill them and throw them in the garbage. Well, it, it makes no sense that that would be the choice that we as a society would make. Agreed. And doing a neuter, a cat neuter, takes, my understanding, a, a minute, a couple minutes? Yeah, if you're slow, it might take you two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So that is a hardly an impact on anyone's time. It's not an inconvenience to take a moment or two to neuter a few cats. And 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 we've come we've come a tremendous way in the percentage of animals that are spayed or neutered since the early 70s when I graduated from veterinary school. So it's not really an effort to convince people to spay or neuter their cats. It's when do you spay and neuter their cats? And Esther said it quite well. Since cats can get pregnant at five months of age, and they can be having litters of kittens at six months of age, why would we continue to promote spay neuter at six months of age? Back it up a, uh, a month to just prior to five months of age. As I was thinking through this, you know, historically there was a time. When I was in veterinary school, they were advocating not neutering cats until nine months of age. And by then, they're completely sexually mature. They're spraying, they're marking their territory, they're fighting. And as cats moved out of the backyard or the barn into the house, people recognized we can't continue to do this. And so they shifted the recommended age for castration of cats from nine months to six months. So my my aha moment was, wouldn't it be great if newborn kittens smelled like male cat urine? Because if they did, then everyone would jump on board on a program that would reduce the number of newborn kittens. Okay. <clears throat> Esther, I'm wondering if you can take a few moments yes. to take us yes. on a bit of a journey about the history of the Fix by Five campaign. How did this all come about? Okay, in the mid-1990s, Peter Marsh came upon a study in Massachusetts that showed that female cats and dogs that had been sterilized after having had at least one litter accounted for 87% of all the litters of kittens and puppies born. So the power of the potential impact of fixing before that first heat hit us hard. We realized that if enough kittens were sprayed or neutered by the age of 20 weeks, shelter intakes would take a nosedive, and also the numbers of community cats would go down. And so our question to ourselves was, why hasn't someone thought of this sooner? Why didn't we think of this sooner? Because it's a solution that's not expensive. In fact, it saves a huge amount of money and it will prevent a huge amount of suffering. So that's when, that's the bottom line of the history when it first started. That was the unofficial beginning. And then it sounded like there were a group of organizations who got together to try and develop this idea. I mean, it's it's not just, you know, Esther's thought, this is a large campaign with many organizations endorsing it. How, how, how did that all happen? Oh, well, I can tell you for years, it was a very small nonprofit, Marion's Dream. For years, what we did was we bought booth space at numerous veterinary conferences. 
We held contests for photos of the cutest kitten spayed by five months. We gave out scrubs with our message to veterinarians. We did surveys and we worked with the Cat Writers Association. And we want to thank Paul Dolly again, who is president of the Petco Foundation for his support in having the booths, giving out the scrubs and doing the surveys. We even changed our name to Beat the Heat. I would say this. In 2015, we had the idea of attending the North American Vet Conference in Orlando and holding a special focus group or task force to discuss the pros and cons of making five months the recommended best practice for age to spay neuters. And speaking of people who helped, Peter Marsh, Paul Jolly, now enter Joan Miller, former president of the Cat Fanciers Association, who understood why six by five would prevent problems and who knew everybody. So I organized the details of the meeting and Joan invited 10 of the most influential veterinarians in the field and they came. And the upshot was that on January 15th, 2016, we met around a table from 2 to 6 p.m. in in Orlando. The work was intense and fruitful. The task force, which included veterinarians from the AVMA, AHA, American Association of Feline Practitioners, and the American Shelter Vets, came up with five recommendations. And these can be seen on the Fix by Five website, which we'll talk about later. And uh, the upshot of that meeting was that the attendees all agreed that there were several benefits to moving recommended age from six months back to five, but these attendees were not authorized to speak for their respective organizations. So 18 months later, as of July 7th, 2017, that was the date that all four National Veterinary Association had officially endorsed that the best practice of spaying and neutering kittens is by five months. So that's it kind of in a nutshell. Excellent. Dr. Bushby, as a veterinarian, as a practicing veterinarian, when you talk with other veterinarians about feline fixed by five, what has the response been? Slowly, it's gaining uh, acceptance, but it's difficult to change something that has become kind of ingrained in the profession over the last half a century. You know, for essentially 50 years, we've been saying the profession has been saying spay neuter at six months of age or older. So there's that this natural resistance. And the veterinarians that are opposed to the shift to the four or five months of age make some claims that they believe are true, but pretty much science has proven are not are not true. Uh, and there's about a half a dozen claims they make. The first is that the surgeries are more difficult. And they, and if you've never done something, you probably think it's difficult. But anyone who has done pediatric spays and neuters of kittens is going to tell you how, how much easier it is than spaying and neutering uh, cats that are adults. So they think it's more difficult. They're they're not sure. Or they question whether anesthesia is safe. And again, I meant I graduated in the early '70s, and the anesthetic agents we had in the early '70s were pentobarbital and methoxyflurane, and those drugs were not safe for pediatric patients. So there's a historical aspect to this. Well, the anesthesia isn't safe. But we have so many new drugs and so many new anesthetic protocols that are safe for kittens as young as four to six weeks of age, that really it's a false claim. Anesthesia in these animals is safe. Again, jumping back to the early 70s, in the early 70s, we didn't really understand why male tomcats had urinary obstruction. And urinary urinary obstruction was a a significant problem in male cats 50 years ago. And the theory was, and some people still believe this, when you castrate a male cat before five months of age, the penis is smaller, so the urethra is going to be smaller. And since the urethra is going to be smaller, it's going to predispose more cats to urinary obstruction. There's a lot of veterinarians that still believe that. That has been absolutely disproven. There have been study after study after study that's looked at the factors that contribute to urinary obstruction in male cats. And not a single one of those studies identifies early age 
castration as a factor in urinary obstruction in male cats. There are veterinarians that believe that it can lead to orthopedic problems. Um, it's a fact. It is a fact that if you remove the sex hormones, then there is a slight delay in the closure of growth plates in the long bones. And so anytime, anytime an animal is spayed or castrated before the animal has stopped growing, you're going to see some very small delay in the closure of those growth plates. But there is no evidence, and, and that's a fact, that occurs. But there is no evidence at all that that leads to any orthopedic problems in cats. In fact, there's been studies that have specifically looked at that. And one study in particular that found that Incidents of orthopedic problems uh, were less, were lower in cats that were sterilized prior to five months of age. Now, that's only one study, uh, but it certainly is counter to the thought that it, predis that it predisposes to orthopedic problems. So there's these age-old theories or myths, some of which used to be taught in veterinary schools, and it's hard for people to accept the change. Now, more and more veterinarians are changing the date, the age at which they do spays and neuters. But realistically, we're going to have to have it's going to be it's going to have to be profession wide. It's going to have to be every single shelter out there spays and neuters cats prior to adoption, and every single practicing veterinarian out there shifts the date to before five months of age. And if those two things happen, we're going to see a dramatic decrease in the overpopulation of cats and the numbers of cats that are either just thrown out to fend for themselves, community cats, or euthanized in shelters. So I'm going to ask you a bit of a follow-up question. There are some folks that may be listening to this podcast that have never seen a kitten get spayed or neutered, you know, under the age of five months. What's the surgery like for a small kitten? Well, they have less fat. They are, uh, the uh, arteries and veins are much smaller. So there's much less hemorrhage. It's easier to get into the abdomen and out of the abdomen because, you know, they haven't been eating Twinkies for the last several months. The surgeries are significantly easier uh, in the younger kittens. There's a group of us that used to do pediatric spay-neuter uh, labs at the North American Veterinary Conference, which is it's called VMX now, but it used to be called the North American Veterinary Conference. And I remember this giant of a veterinarian. This, this guy was about six foot six. He had hands. Both of my hands could probably fit in one of his hands. He owned five different practices, and he would not let any of his veterinarians do pediatric spay neuter but he signed up for this lab and we put a two pound kitten on the surgery table in front of him and he looked at us and said i can't do this and we simply looked back and said yes you can and he did it he did a spay of a two pound kitten you know, that kitten could have curled up and fallen asleep in one of his hands. His hands were so big. And by the time that lab was over, he said, I'm going to go back to my five practices and I'm going to get all of my veterinarians doing their space and castrations at a younger age. So it's once you've done it, you're sold. But if you've never done it, there's all of these fears 
oh, the surgeries might be hard or the anesthesia might be uh, is not as safe. There's these historical fears that creep in if you've never done it. And once you've done it, you'll never go back. So Dr. Bushby, we've talked in other scenarios about the veterinary shortage and how practices are overwhelmed and overtaxed. Does being a feline fixed by five clinic actually either save time within your clinic or help a clinic increase their revenues? I would say it is certainly quicker. You can do more surgery, you know, given a unit of time, you could do more surgeries in five month old cats than you could four or five month old cats than you could in six to seven month old cats. Or given a certain number of surgeries, you could get out of the OR room quicker and back into the exam room quicker if you're doing the four to five month old cats as opposed to older cats. So, so yes, it would save time and you could potentially earn more money or you could, you know, and, or potentially get more animals spayed and neutered if you do them younger. Well, and I think that that makes sense because there's so many clinics out there now that are not even accepting new patients because oh, they feel like they just don't have capacity. And if we can do the kittens at a younger age and save time, but yet still generate more revenue and also saving time is revenue too. If your staff is getting out at five versus 6 PM, that's good for the, for the staff, for the morale. So there's a variety of different components here that could be beneficial to a private practice clinic, as well as a nonprofit, you know, high volume, high quality right. spay neuter clinic there. This, this is for everyone. So we believe that feline fix by five is a private practice solution or an across the board solution. Is that correct, Dr. Bushby? I, I agree with that. But one of the things, you know, I I only work part-time now, but when I'm working, I'm standing across the surgery table from either a junior or senior veterinary student and they're doing the surgeries. And I always I always find an opportunity to ask the student, what's the most expensive thing you use when you do a spay? And some of the students will say, well, the anesthetic drugs, and other students will say, well, the suture material. And the answer is, no, it's your time. So if you can do that kitten spay in six to 10 minutes, as opposed to an adult cat spay in 15 to 20 minutes, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. Yeah, and and thinking like a private practice owner here in my my veterinary economics hat is if you are looking at your business to be sustainable down the road, we've been putting out fires, emergencies of our current clients, cats, they've ingested something, they need dentals, they've got something going on. So we're we're reactively working with our current batch of clients, but we're not feeding the pipeline for the future. So they'll have a generation of older cats that will pass away and then they're going to need new clients. And so it, it does behoove a clinic to have a spread of different ages. So sure. you, you may want to open up so that you are getting these kittens looped into your private practice system. So you have more diversity. So I think from a veterinary economic standpoint, this makes sense too. Absolutely. So Esther, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And can you tell us um, if folks want to find out more about Feline Fix by Five? And I believe there is a way for clinics to actually sign up as a Feline Fix by Five veterinarian. Can you just share with us how it, how they would do that? Yes, they would just go to the Fix by Five website, which is www.fixbyfive.org. And there will be a button there. You might have it in front of you right now and be able to see what button it is. But there is a button that they can click on to simply sign up and they put in the information about their clinic. It's then listed on our listing of those veterinarians in that state that do fix by five. And Esther, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Well, we just hope that people will get out and spread the word. It's a big country and we've been trying on our own so far and, and gotten the ways, but I can't even imagine 
if lots of people began to uh, not only listen to Dr. Bushby, but spread the word to their own pets and their friends and other pet owners, how much of a help this would be in ending the suffering of cats that are unwanted. It's just way too many right now. And this is a way to fix that problem. It doesn't cost a nickel. Dr. Bushby, do you have anything you want to share as we close out? Just if you need to be convinced, if you're not convinced, do two things. Walk into your local shelter in May and look at the number of kittens in cages in, local, in, your, in your local shelters. If, if you have this sense that we've solved the overpopulation problem, just walk into your local shelter. And then try it. Simply, you, if you're a practicing veterinarian that's doing spays and neuters, you have all the skills you need to do them in four to five month old, to do the surgeries in four to five month old kittens. Try it. And you'll find how easy it is, how safe it is, and you'll be convinced. Excellent. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today and listening to the United We Spay podcast. If you liked this episode, be sure to share and subscribe. We'll be releasing a new episode each month, digging into important conversations surrounding spay neuter throughout the United States and around the world. For more resources about spay neuter and learn more about our work at unitedspayalliance.org. That's United, S-P-A-Y, alliance.org. Get in touch with us at any time by emailing info at unitedspayalliance.org. Until next time, Esther, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bushby, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>